Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. It has been the three to four months I said it may be, and I'm back and I'm even wearing the same jumper, so hello, it's nice to see you again. Um, this is just a quick little insight into what you may study if you're going to do aerospace engineering at uni like me, or you can see what modules might be the same as me for the different subjects you're studying. I can share with you a little bit of an idea of what it may be like and I hope that it helps you. So let's get on with the video. By the way, I studied seven modules this year plus one cheeky extra. That may vary depending on where you go to uni. Oh, side note, um, the way my uni does aerospace is quite different to other unis I believe in terms that we don't have an aerospace department we are part of a department called interdisciplinary programs in engineering so we are with the bioengineers and the general engineers we form IPE yeah that is our department so we don't have specific lecturers all our modules come from other departments they are aero specific modules but our lecturers are specialist in say materials when we're studying materials or they're a specialist in control engineering when we're studying control engineering which has advantages and disadvantages i personally really like that way there is a deeper level of knowledge there that you can kind of hack into and i found it really good but obviously different unis have different things and whatever's your vibe may not be my vibe yeah so a lot of these modules i have in common with either general engineers bioengineers or even people who are on like specific courses like civil engineering who have a department. So that is a side note about Sheffield I just want to include to help guide you through this. The first and probably most obvious form on the list is maths. Surprise! Um, engineers have to do quite a lot of maths and every module I do you do maths in it but we also have a pure maths module to kind of lay down the foundation of skills and build on A-level maths. This is by far <laughs> the hardest exam I sat and so if I have any advice for anyone studying engineering like don't slack on the maths. But the good news is that you don't need to be really good at the pure maths to be good at the engineering stuff but you still need to know it. So subjects that you'll cover that I covered are going to be things like calculus, integration, differentiation, differential equations, you're going to need to know those and we actually studied those towards the end of the year. I don't really know why that's the case, but I think that's the thing you study closest to the exams and you're supposed to have already done a bit of it at A-level, but I would say start much earlier than the end of the year. So keep up to date with your maths. Um, in terms of textbooks, uh, the University of Sheffield have not really changed their recommended list in quite a while. Um, so the book I rec would recommend, and that was recommended to me and is on the list, is the K.A. Stroud Engineering Mathematics. Um, I think they're on the 7th or the 11th edition of this at the moment. I can't actually remember. But this is my dad's second edition copy from when he was doing engineering and I still use it. I use this for the whole year and it just takes you through step by step. So this, top recommendation if you're studying maths. Systems analysis and control, which was the biggest learning curve of all my modules. Like, first semester, systems analysis and control is all about analysis of a system and how we can use programming and parameters to control that system. So, for example, a water heater that you want to maintain the water at a certain temperature. How can we make sure that there isn't an error, or how can we reduce? the error in that temperature, how can we use negative feedback to make sure that the temperature stays at the right temperature, and then gradually you move on to more and more and more complicated systems. So it's a lot of MATLAB, like MATLAB is your best friend and your worst enemy for this module. Um, I personally didn't really like this module. <laughs> stick with MATLAB, stick with it, you will get through it. You have to do it, it's important. Tea break. Next up is aerospace materials. Now, I like this module quite a lot. So your semester one kind of builds on the materials you do in A-level physics, um, which is like tensile strength 
and Young's modulus, but then you get other new exciting things like bulk modulus and shear modulus. And then in second semester, we went through like compositions of different types of materials, so like ferrous metals, non-ferrous metals, and then we went a bit more into material selection. So how do you assign value to a certain property and um, which properties do you actually want your material to have? What is useful for you to have? Yeah, I got on with materials, liked it, good module, and personally one I found quite interesting. Aerodynamics and thermodynamics, probably one of two favourite modules. The first semester we did aerodynamics, second semester we did thermodynamics. Both are really interesting because both aerodynamics especially, you could immediately see the application to a plane. So even though you learn it in maybe different contexts for other types of engineering, yeah, you could immediately see like, ah, you need that to do that because you need the plane to fly. A lot of deriving equations, we didn't need to know the derivations, but we did need to use the correct form of the equation for the different parameters. I found it. So we got given this book called The Little Book of Thermofluids. I think we were supposed to pay three pounds for it, but because we weren't getting any in-person teaching, they were like, you can have it for free. You get a blank copy of this in the exam, I think, but I annotated this a lot because it was a really good reference, but sometimes to help my brain, I would add little bits of understanding. So if your uni provides something like this, priceless resource, Aaron Thermodynamics, big thumbs up from me. Next is uh, a module that's actually we had in common with the civil and architectural engineers. We are an interdisciplinary degree called uh, statics and dynamics. So this was all about how forces interact with objects. So it's a lot of moments, things like trusses to create no force or no moment that like will unbalance the structure. That kind of thing is what you study in this module. Really like my lecturer for this module. Actually, I really like my lecturers for most modules, so it feels mean, but yes. Not one of my most interesting modules, I'd say from my point of view, but definitely an important one. Yay, we love that for us. Electrics and drive. Surprise, surprise, this is an electrical engineering module that again was kind of split into two semesters. Um, it was one module, two semesters, slightly different topics. So in our first semester we did uh, a basic overview of electrics. So this was things like A-level physics, GCSE physics even, where I mean, you've got your currents, you've got P equals IV, you've got P equals I squared R, power, current, voltage, electricity, Ohm's law, Kepler's law, not Kepler's law, Kirchhoff's law, I got my case mixed up. Except now you introduce more maths and you introduce AC circuits and AC currents, which means complex numbers. How do numbers that don't exist affect electricity? But they do. So that was the first semester. And then our second semester is when it got a bit mind blowing and it was about reliability. We can turn circular motion from a motor into an actuator for a part or maybe a plane, an electric plane maybe most accurate at the moment are hydraulic Shh, these are just these are just examples okay um so yeah and how we can turn that into whatever that motion is lateral as opposed to rotational movement that kind of thing fine so actually our first semester i had in common with a lot of different degrees i think medical physics also did that first semester but our second semester was more aerospace focused so again you see how we are interdisciplinary degree but with aerospace focus. The next two are slightly different. Ooh. So this next module was called Design, Build and Test. And the idea of this is you basically learn plane 101, how a plane flies, the different types of flows, lift, drag, power, coefficient of lift, coefficient of drag, things like this, like how does a plane stay in the air, how to design parameters, affect plane, that kind of thing. But yeah, really fun module, actually, really loved it. The lecturer for this module was also my personal tutor, which was just really great because, you know, it's nice to be like, haha, I was in your lecture, I like this, but yes. Fun module, really enjoyed it. Hello, so welcome back. Um, 
slight lighting change, it's now got dark, my camera battery died. But the last module I just wanted to talk about you with is something that Sheffield run for a week in January called the Global Engineering Challenge. And what this is, is Sheffield go to the employers and say what skills do you want our engineers to graduate with? They come back with a list and through this challenge, which is in partnership with Engineers Without Borders UK, you work in a team of people from different disciplines to present a solution to an engineering problem you've been given and you present like a theoretical solution. Anyway, I really enjoyed this. I ended up with an absolutely fabulous group so I was very lucky in that sense. But you do need to pass this to pass first year but it doesn't count towards anything. You get a pass merit distinction but you don't get a percentage so it doesn't affect your overall grade. Um, but yeah, I just really liked this when I was playing Sheffield because it's so focused on employability and I think it just shows that the uni is helping you get your job at the end. Like, it's not just, here's what you need to learn, go learn it and then sort yourself out. They are giving you a whole engineering education, not just the academics. So yeah, that was a really good week. Hence why I put it in this video, because you do have to pass. That's the last module. For this video, I'm not going to give you a breakdown of results in each of my modules, um, because I found that I actually did far better this year because I wasn't really comparing myself to anybody else. Like I had a couple of friends on my course who I discussed with things with, but other than that, like I wasn't comparing myself to other people. So I was just focusing on what I wanted to do, what I needed to work on, and I think that worked out for me far better. And I don't want people on my course to start comparing individual grades. But I will tell you my overall grade purely for the reason because it does affect my options later down the line, um, which I will explain to you after you see the clip of me getting my results. It's going to take a while to understand that I don't do not do so. Okay, okay, so I've passed everything. Mild confusion. Why? I don't know. Do you have a calculator? Yes. Why do I? Seven. <laughs> I got 70.14%, which is that. And if I'm permitted to proceed because I'm on year with North America, I'm gonna do the maths again. Okay, so you may be thinking to yourself now, why does my overall grade actually matter? Um, and this is the really exciting thing that I have, don't think I've talked about here, but that was because for it to happen, I needed to get a certain grade. So the full title of my course is actually Aerospace Engineering with a year in North America. Now what this is, is it offers the chance for um, engineers to study abroad in their third year without adding an extra year to their degree, like that year still counts. So I saw this opportunity and I was like, I really want to give that a go. I found out about it on the offer holder day and I then pre-registered for it during clearing. So even though I got in, because I pre-registered during clearing, I could be moved on to it, which is a bit sneaky, but it worked out fine. And um, yeah, I was like, I've got to give it a go. But to do this, you need to maintain a good GPA, essentially. And the threshold for this was 69.5%. So <laughs> me and my 70.1%, we're just in there. Um, so, I, so this is why I'm actually wearing this jumper, like, because this is one of the universities I could go to. Um, so I bought this as motivation, and I might not go there, I'm not, I'm not sure where I want to go. That's, like, an exciting announcement. Um, I may be doing my third year abroad in America, which is insane. But yeah, I will talk more about that in another video. Other than that, I think that's everything for this video. Yeah, so thanks for coming along and entertaining my nattering. I hope it's been useful to you. If it hasn't, I'm sorry. But yeah, if you've made it this far, thanks very much. Please leave a like, please subscribe, because 93% of you who watch my videos aren't subscribed. 93%. Shout out to you 7%, but come on, please hit the subscribe button. It would mean a lot. And I hope to see you all again very soon. Bye! Say